Well, Senior Bowl practice is in the books out there in Mobile, Alabama, as we get ready for the job interview set for Saturday. Of course, the game, that's where you make your money. 100-plus prospects trying to wow their future employer before that draft in 2023, of course, in April. Plenty of talent out there, but the question is, who has the most to gain? And, of course, there's one guy that can help us with that, our draft guru, I call him Ryan Wilson, checking in, who's actually still out there. And our dub, a new batch of kids for you. Looking to turn some heads to play on Sundays. You were there to see all the practice go down this week. Nothing but talent across the board, but give me your standout player. Let's start with the offensive guy. Yeah, Brandon, there were a lot of good football players there this week. It felt like more than in, in previous years, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's start on the offensive side of the ball. I'll go with Michael Wilson, the wide receiver out of Stanford. Uh, had a good season, missed the last half of the season with an injury, but prior to that, he, he balled out on a team that was up and down with that quarterback, Tanner McKee, who's also going to get drafted, came to Mobile, and he won his one-on-one -on -one drills consistently. Here he is going up against Riley Moss, the cornerback out of Iowa, who also had a good week, creating separation and then making a play in the end zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that showed up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I'll be honest, and, and Rick Spielman, I think he'll tell the truth if you ask him. He wasn't high on Wilson coming into the week, but he changed his opinion as we got to these practices, and, and he showed out each and every practice. And I feel like he changed a lot of people's opinions as we're going further into the draft process here. He was a day two guy for me this week. He remains that. He's just going to move up a little bit and, and make some noise when we talk about stacking these wide receivers and when they end up going off the board eventually. Michael Wilson, any relation there, Ryan? He's handsome. He's tall. He's fast. What do you think, Brandon? He's definitely family there. I guess that's what you're trying to tell me. He's definitely family. All right, what about a defensive guy for you? <laughs> yeah, so on the other side of the ball, uh, let's go with cornerback Darius Rush. We saw Riley Moss. I mentioned him. He did have a good week. But Darius Rush, I don't want to say he came out of nowhere. He played at South Carolina, but he played opposite Cam Smith, who's going to be a first-round pick this year. Cam Smith got all the attention in the fall. Darius Rush just did his job, and then he got to Mobile, and he was uh, played with his hair on fire. You see him in these one-on-one -on -one drills with the interception. He undercut every over route that he saw. Here's another example right here. No one is getting open. That's against Dontavian Wicks out of UVA, who also had a good week. And here's the thing, and Rick and I talked about this on the With the First Pick podcast. Rush is probably a day three guy when he came in this week. He had some special team value. He's a great teammate. The coaches down in South, South Carolina love him. When you see plays like this, your first instinct is, okay, we have to go watch more of what he did in the fall and see if that translated to what we saw this week or if there are gaps in what we saw this week compared to his fall tape, and then try to figure out what happened if that ends up being the case. But right now, a fantastic week for Rush. Has one more game to prove himself on Saturday. But, again, uh, there was a lot to like on the defensive side of the ball, the cornerback position, and it was led by Darius Rush. One of those rangy quarters we've seen in the past from South Carolina. J.C. Horn, the latest, of course, and now you can maybe add a rush to the mix here. But I'm curious, expectations for the game. You know, what position are you keeping tabs on come Saturday? So I said at the top that there's so much talent this week, perhaps more than we've seen in recent years, and the, the lone exception is at the quarterback position, the most important position on the field. And I'll be honest, all six quarterbacks here struggled. Hinton Hooker's here, but he has the ACL. He did not participate, but he did do the interviews. You see the names here, Max Doug and Jake Hayner. Tyson Bajan, it's a fun story, the Division II kid out of Shepard. Uh, the biggest kid here has the best arm as a quarterback. He struggled with accuracy. Uh, part of that was probably nerves, and, and part of that is probably throwing the guys he doesn't know that are uh, much better athletes than he's probably used to playing with. Uh, Jaron Hall and Clayton Thune. So these are they round out the, the group here. Malik Cunningham is also here. He was a late ad, and he may have been the most consistent in the two practices that he got under his belt. He didn't practice on Tuesday. So I'd like to see these quarterbacks come in on Saturday, finally put it all together, because none of them had a standout performance. There were no uh, J uh, Justin Herberts, excuse me, no Daniel Jones in terms of standout performances during the week. So that needs to happen on Saturday, because as we sit here, these are all probably day three guys, unless something special happens in the next few months. QB is always on the watch list. I'm curious, though, when you after the game, of course, we always wonder who's that guy that can rise in the conversation to the first round. Do you have one for us on Sunday or Monday? You might consider, you know what? He might have made some money. Yeah, I'm going to go two offensive linemen, Brandon. Dewan Jones out of Ohio State. He practiced on Tuesday, missed the rest of the week with concussion-like symptoms. But that Tuesday practice was enough to make people go, oh, my goodness, this dude is not messing around. And look at these numbers here. 6'8", he actually weighed, weighed 375 this week. He had 36-plus-inch arms, which are uh, incredibly long arms. His 89-inch wingspan set a senior bowl record. And he was just mauling dudes left and right in the one-on-one -on -one 
pass blocking drills, and he really got your attention. And I was talking to uh, a defensive line coach in the Big Ten that said Dewan Jones was much more difficult to concern themselves with than even Paris Johnson Jr., who played left tackle and is going to be a first-round pick. And another name I'll mention quickly is John Michael Schmitz, the center out of Minnesota. That was Rick Spielman's favorite guy all week. Uh, at the end, I think he sent him a Valentine card. He was so impressed with what he did this week. <laughs> he's a big center. He moves well on space. He's not going to be moved off the point uh, when he's going up against those big nose tackles. And I don't know if he's going to sneak into the first round, but he's going to be an early day two guy if he doesn't end up going on Thursday. It's always good when the big uglies get some love there, of course, heading into that game. Ryan Wilson, of course, there in Mobile. Appreciate your time breaking all that down before we get to the game on Saturday. Oh, yeah, that's the right side. That's Tell your buddy Rick he needs to make sure he's on up the right side. Something that happened earlier this week. But you catch both of them there on the pod. Talking about the latest, of course, when it comes to the game. Also, where do the Bucks go in post-Tom Brady era? And also, Sean Payton, can he fix Russell Wilson? Much more. Just download and give him a follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.